What does love look like? In the next two weeks, we're going to be exploring this. And this week, from the perspective of the law, next week, the perspective of the gospel. And today, we're focusing on what's called the Ten Commandments. You see, there is the civil law of the Old Testament. In fact, there's thousands of laws. And there's the ceremonial laws. But there's also the moral law. And what we're bound to for all time is the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. And it's broken down into two parts. What it means to love God, what it means to love our neighbor. And the bottom line is this, God is love. He is perfect love. And he wants us to understand what that love looks like. In the Ten Commandments, we see a glimpse of what love looks like. And so I want to break this down for us today. So I want to go through Exodus chapter 20. And it starts out with like this. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the Father on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. So the first commandment, you shall know the gods before me. The longer part I read there, you should know graven images. Some people make that into the second commandment, but we in, as Lutheran Christians, the way we number things is we see it as a continuation of the first commandment. That nothing in this life should be more important to us than a relationship with Jesus Christ. And this commandment's first for a reason. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When we put God first, everything else falls into place. Nothing is more important than that. And what love looks like is putting God number one in our lives. The second commandment is you should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. What does that mean? That means that we as followers and believers in God, that we put him not just first, but the, our lives and our words show this. What we say, what we do, reflects this belief we have in God. I've often found it so um, interesting around the world that when people swear, they swear in the name of the God of Christianity. They never swear in the names of other gods. Even my roommate in college, who was from Kuwait, he swore in the name of my God. I said, Fahad, why don't you swear in the name of your God? He wasn't sure why that was the case. You see, the devil wants the name of our God dragged through the mud. Our God is the true God, and we're to honor him in what we say and what we do. The third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or your sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rest on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy." Honor the Sabbath day. What does this mean? To set aside a day during the week where we worship God. To set aside a day where you recalibrate your life, where you turn off your phone, turn off the electronics, take some time to think and to pray and, and to make sure your life is aligned properly with God. God knows how we're made. He created us. And sometimes we need to slow down and focus and not keep going through the rat race of life and, and lose focus on who we are, why we exist, to keep God in the center of our lives by worshiping him and centering our lives around him. And this is what it means to love God, to put him first in everything, to honor him what we say and do and, and to worship him and, and to take some time to, to make sure that we are meditating on his word and, and our life is right with him. 
The next seven commandments talk about how to love your neighbor. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Honor your father and mother. When? Always. What about if they passed away? We're still supposed to honor them. What if they're not perfect? Well, no parents are perfect. To honor them. What if they've hurt you? Honor them. But still, if you're being abused, you need to get help in that situation. But still, we're to learn respect at home. And if respect isn't learned at home, it's not going to be carried out away from the home. To be honest with you, I think we're living more and more in a day and age where too many parents are concerned about wanting their kids to be their friends. No. Parents need to be parents. Respect needs to be learned at home. If children are spoiled, they will not learn respect. It has to start with respecting their parents. The fifth commandment is you should not murder. You see, God is a giver of life. And life at all stages, it matters to God. Every life matters. And we respect the lives of others. You're probably thinking to yourself, hey, here's a commandment I finally kept. I've not murdered anybody. Well, we can sin in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. And maybe you never have murdered anybody, but if you thought in your mind, I wish so-and-so would fall off the face of the earth, what did you just do? You murdered them in your mind. You see, most of our sinning is done in our mind. And the challenge is this. If we keep thinking about something over and over again, eventually as a much greater likelihood we're going to do it. We're going to carry out what our thoughts are. And if thoughts get entrenched in our lives, they become habits. And habits that become entrenched becomes our character. And so it's a slippery slope that once sin begins, even in our mind, it just becomes possibly even an addiction in our life if we're not careful. But back to this commandment, life is important. What about our military people that serve us overseas? Is that murder where they kill the enemy? No. They're protecting us. Murder is when people intentionally take the lives of another person. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. The sexuality is is meant to be used in the context which God intended for it to be used. What we see in our society so often is when people do not use sexuality in context which God intended, it causes challenges, it causes difficulties. The seventh commandment, you shall not steal to respect the property of other people, not take what is not yours. The Eighth Commandment, you should not bear false witness against your neighbor, which means to respect your neighbor's reputation, to speak the truth to them, to lift people up. If you're in a conversation and people are saying bad things about somebody who's not there, cut off the conversation or leave if they're not going to stop that conversation. We're going to lift people up. Respect one another. Everybody's a special child of God. The ninth commandment, you should not covet your neighbor's house, which means learn to be content with the things that God has given to you. The ninth one deals with things that are not living. The tenth, things that are living. In fact, the tenth one says, you should not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his, the female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. Learn to be content with what God has blessed you with. You have so many people in this world today that are never content. They want more and more and more. and They're they're never happy. It's never good enough. But yet God blesses us each and every day with what we need to get by for each day. We're blessed. We're not living in scarcity. We're living in abundance because of God's provision. And so if we can learn to live this way, we love our neighbor. You know, Martin Luther lays out the law in, in three ways. He calls it the curb, the mirror, and the guide. The first, second, third use of the law. The curb, that if you break God's law, what's going to happen is there's going to be repercussions. To give you an example, when I was young, I went to the store to buy some stickers for five cents. There's supposed to be three stickers. I got outside, opened the package, there's only two. So I went back in the store and I, I took a package and I started walking out, but the cash register person, the cashier, saw in the rounded mirror in the corner what I did. And she says, come over here. And she goes, I'm going to call the police. And I just started panicking. She goes, okay, I'll call your parents. I started panicking more. And she goes, put that back where you found it, and don't you ever do that again. And guess what? 
I never did it again. If I would have gotten away with that, what would have been next? The 10 cent stickers? And then maybe up you know, from there and kind of moving on to the bigger things after that? That's so often how sin works, that, that with breaking the law, there's a repercussion. If you get a traffic, t- traffic ticket, I guarantee that you're going to be thinking more clearly in the future about not making that same mistake again and being nailed with an expensive ticket that also raises your car insurance in many situations. It's a curb. It's a mirror. When you look in God's law, you see yourself for who you really are. And what we see is we've all sinned. We've all made mistakes in our thoughts, our words, our actions. We have all sinned. Every one of us has it in common. It's a mirror. We wouldn't know what sin is if it wasn't for the law. It's a guide. Number one, it guides us to realization that we have sinned, we have fallen short, we need forgiveness, and it guides us to Jesus. And Jesus is the one who forgives us. He's the one who fulfilled these laws perfectly, never breaking one of them. He became the perfect sacrifice on the cross for our sins, and by believing in him, our sins are forgiven, and the way to heaven is open for us. We're forgiven. It guides us to Jesus. But now in salvation, what the law does, it guides us on how to live our lives in love. And what does love look like? Like this. Think of the commandments in a different way. To love God more than anything else. To put him first in everything. That I respect God and what I say and what I do. That's what love looks like. That I set aside a, a, a time, a day each week where I worship God and I slow down and I recalibrate my life and make sure it's right in my journey with God and living for him. That's what it means to love God. That I respect my parents. Even if if they've gone on to heaven, I still love and respect my family name and live to honor my parents in what I say and do. That I respect the lives of all people at all stages. Every life matters is is important to me. That I will use sexuality in a context which God intended for me to use it as his word lays out. That I'll respect the property of all people that I will honor people's reputation and speak the truth to people, lift people up and help people to find the good in them, to be their very best for God's glory. That I am thankful for what God has blessed me with. And if I get more, it's a blessing from him, but I'm blessed to be a blessing. And I'm not going to be living my life always wanting more and, and more when I really need more of God more than anything else in life. Does it mean that I, it's wrong to be successful, to have a lot of things, but to realize that God blesses me with his things. I'm blessed to be a blessing for others, and I'm thankful for what I have. And if we live this way, we're living in love. And that's what love looks like. And the bottom line is, we're not going to be perfect in ourselves. We look at these commandments, we cannot help but realize, yeah, I've messed up time and time again. But through Jesus Christ, we find forgiveness. And through Jesus Christ, we find the strength to live by these commandments. And the reason we want to live by them is to bring glory to him, to to thank him for his love for us, to thank him for what he's done for us. And we thank him for these commandments. Because the more we follow them, the more we live in love. And here's a challenge. I want to encourage you to memorize them. Maybe not word for word, but at least to understand the concept of each of these commandments. Lock and load them in your mind, in your heart, in your life. And watch how your life is going to get so much better. These commandments don't save us. They show us our sin. SOS, show our sin. The gospel SOS shows our Savior. But the law is a blessing from God to help us on the right path. And that path ultimately leads us to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your commandments. We thank you for showing us what love looks like. We know we sin daily, living outside the bounds of your perfect love. But forgive us. And help us strive more and more to not just know these commandments, but to live them out, to live in love for you and for one another. In Jesus' name, amen.